Zach's Screen of the Week, an overview of a timely stock screening strategy aimed at helping you produce more profitable investing results. This week we're talking about grading a company's management with return on equity, or that old familiar ROE, as they call it. Joining me, as always, Zach's Maestro of Stock Screens and head of the Research Wizard Division of Zach's Investment Research, Kevin Matris. So I see you're talking about return on equity. Yes. As I just said. Uh, right. I didn't realize, actually, as I was saying that, how useful of an indicator ROE is. But I guess it really is, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. I mean, it's a, it's a very commonly used item, um, and a lot of people like to use the ROE to be able to take a, a gauge as to how efficient a company's management is. Uh, it's a very popular item with money managers, very popular item with investors, including myself, and uh, I think it really helps you see, you know, getting an insight as to how the company is using its shareholders' equity. Uh, moreover, I think looking at, uh, at how a company's ROE changes over time, I think that's very important. If you see an ROE is steadily increasing, that means the company is really probably better managed and they're really paying attention to detail. So let's start at that ever familiar place, the beginning. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of that. <laughs> what exactly is ROE? Well, the, uh, the, re the formula for return on equity, I have it right up here, uh, and the definition is simple. It is net income divided by shareholder equity, uh, and if you wanted to look at the components, the income number for this formula, uh, this is listed on the income statement. And if you were to look at the shareholder equity number, this is the difference between total assets and total liabilities, and this is found on a company's balance sheet. Now, the way you look at ROE, it is always expressed as a percentage. So a company with an ROE of, let's say, 10%, that means the company is creating 10 cents of assets for every $1 of shareholder equity in any given year. And let me also say, too, when you look at the shareholder equity, this is including reinvested earnings, all right? Okay. So if one were so inclined, how would they go about using this ROE? Well, there are many, you know, great ways to use the uh, the ROE, and really it's it's good no matter what kind of an investor you are, you know, whether you are a growth and income investor or a value investor. If you're looking for aggressive growth stocks or maybe just momentum companies, I think uh, looking at the ROE and seeing how a company is using its shareholder equity, once again, is a very good thing to look at. But I also believe it's very helpful in being able to alert you to a company's problems. Perfect example is Washington Mutual. Check mm -hmm. this out. I have a chart up here. This is a chart of Washington Mutual. It's a quarterly chart, uh, and I have an ROE overlay on top of it. But you'll see that early in the second quarter of 2006, WAMU traded as high as 44.87, and its first quarter's ROE was 14.34%. But by the end of the second quarter, the stock was off its highs and its ROE was lower at 14.8%. Now, as WAMU's ROE declined quarter after quarter after quarter, it went down to 13.44%, then 12.62, and then 12.05. You can just see it's going lower and lower and lower. Mm -hmm. You can see its stock price has eroded as well. Finally, by the end of 2007, its ROE was more than cut in half and its stock price was down by over 70%. Now, in 2008, WAMU's ROE was showing a negative value, uh, and they finally marked their place in history last week by becoming the largest U.S. bank failure ever. J.P. Morgan right now has since acquired them. But you can see, as the ROE continued to fall, nobody really knows if the stock is going to continue to go lower and lower and lower, but if you see a company as big as WAMU continues to be for the lack of a better word, mismanaging their company, that is a great sign that something is terribly wrong and you should be getting out of there running for the hills. All right. And last week, just for a time reference point here for people who uh, might be following the calendar, we're recording this on the 29th yes. of September. So right. you can work backwards in the calendar from there. Right. One thing I want to say is you can start using, you know, the return on equity item in your screens right away. You know, we have a screener on Zacks.com. It is a free screener, so anybody can use it. And you can see with this image uh, that I have here up on the slide, this is how you can access the ROE. So in the category section of the screener, all you have to do is look for the return on investment category, and then once you select the category, 
you'll see in the criteria section, all you need to do is go to the current ROE, and then you can determine what valuation and what operator you want to use. Also, too, you'll notice that there's a little question mark right after every item. This is helpful because if you don't know what an item is or you don't know how it's created or even you know what a, a value should be, if you click on it, a helpful definition pops up and it kind of guides you into the appropriate way to use these items. So it's great for the advanced user and also it's great for the beginner as well. Okay. Now, if you are an advanced user, I think another good thing you can do is you can look at the, uh, the research wizard. You can also screen for different things. You can look at the historical return on equity, which is what we just saw in that previous slide, seeing how the return on equity has changed over time. You can also see how uh, the, the company's ROE stacks up to its industry, because every single industry has a different ROE benchmark, if you will, because different companies may require different amounts of equity to really run their business. I think a great example is to look at the steel industry in comparison to the software industry. The median ROE for the steel industry is 23%, whereas the median ROE for the software industry is 7%. So if all you're doing is screening for an absolute number, let's say you're looking for companies with an ROE of, let's say, 10, you're going to miss out on a lot of great companies uh, like the software industry. Mm -hmm. So I think looking for, for valuations that are doing better than their respective industry, that's going to help you find the best relative values from what groups they happen to reside in. And again, you can do this within the research wizard. So, sounds like ROE then, a powerful indicator with many different ways to use it. Very powerful indicator, and uh, again, I think it's one of the most useful things you can use in your screening, especially in today's market environment. All right, you've kept us hanging long enough now. Do you have a, a screen, a definite screen with a stock example? Yeah, the, uh, the screen I'm running today, it's relatively simple. You know, I usually start off by looking at companies with a, with a Zacks rank of a 1 or a 2. Today I'm looking for companies with a Zacks rank of a 1. And I usually put in price and volume constraints and these kinds of things. But the key component for the screen I'm running today are these two things up here. I'm looking for companies with an ROE that is greater than its five-year average ROE. And then I'm also looking for companies with a return on equity that is greater than its average for its industry. So talking about what we had just mentioned about how you want to compare it to its industry, this is the screen that we're running today. A lot of really interesting picks have popped up. So, an example then of that stock that came through the screen. Yeah, one of the stocks that came through is a company called Steris Corp, uh, ticker STE, and they are in the medical products uh, industry, and they're a leading provider of infection protection, contamination prevention, and they're also in the surgical supply systems. Anyways, they came into the week with a Zacks rank of 1, which is a strong buy. You can see their ROE is 13.73% uh, versus its five-year average of only 12.42%, so their ROE is above their five-year average. Their ROE is also above the average for their industry. Uh, the average for their industry is 9%, so they're well above the average for the industry. Uh, if you look at a chart, you can see that in spite of all of the, uh, the top market conditions we've seen, you can see they're basing near their 52-week high, and it looks as if they're getting ready to potentially make an even higher 52-week high. So the stock looks very strong. Do you or does anyone in your household own any of the stocks you mentioned in your piece today? Nope. All right. <laughs> you can actually see a couple of more stocks that came through this week's screen by linking to the text version of this screen of the week off of our homepage at Zax.com. You can find out more about the free screener on Zax.com as well by clicking the screening tab at the top of our homepage. You know, the key to successful screening is in discovering those screens which have produced profitable results in the past. And Kevin uses Zach's powerful research wizard stock screening, backtesting, and reporting software program to achieve all of his screens. You can learn more about the research wizard if you want to kick your screening up a notch <laughs> by going to zax.com forward slash research wizard. With Kevin Matris and the Screen of the Week, I'm Terry Ruffalo.